Welcome back to the TRS and YouTube channel. We are continuing our countdown until the NFL draft. And we are on day 20, which is the Seattle Seahawks. They have a pick at five, but that pick was not their own. So we finally get to where they rightfully are. That's pick 20, but they obviously still have pick five. Very exciting time. Very, 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 very exciting time. If you're a Seattle Seahawks fan, the, the just the team they had last year was a lot of fun. But there still is a lot of holes, and there's still clear paths for this team to continue to grow and get better and that starts in the draft you know it really does we're going to be you know using this mock draft simulator here and playing with the cards that we are currently dealt i don't think will anderson is available here at three i mean at five there's a good chance he is i it's tough you don't know how many quarterbacks are really going to go if if we're being honest, so that's that definitely throws a little bit of a loop into things. I think if this is how the board falls, bro, it'd be really tough. Like Jalen Carter, there's just a lot of questions. I think I'm just going to go Will Anderson, but this pick will be Will Anderson Jr. or Jalen Carter. You know, so you can kind of, I don't think neither of them are really going to affect my draft strategy too much. Um, you're going to get a hell of a defensive player. Just to, There's just no other way around it. I mean, Will Anderson Jr.'s sophomore year is just unbelievable. Jalen Carter's sophomore and junior year are just unbelievable. Two very, 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 very good prospects. Um, whichever one Seattle lands on will be awesome. I'm going to go Will Anderson Jr. here because that's how the board fell in this mock. Um, there's a good chance he's gone. Maybe that's when they turn to Jalen Carter. Maybe it's Tyree Wilson. This is going to be one of the one of the, one of those three people here at five if it's not... I would be pretty surprised. Now, again, I think the biggest needs are on the defensive side of the football, in the trenches specifically. You can even throw the offense into that side as well. I'm going to go immediately look back into the, the defensive line room. Brian Brzee, it was pretty fun. I think that makes a lot of sense. Maybe we want to double dip at edge. You know, we could certainly do that as well. But I do think this could be a sneaky wide receiver pick here. They have DK. DK is great. They have Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett's great. I mean, you know, Tyler Lockett's getting a little older. They could kind of look to get a little younger in that room. But it also, also would not surprise me if they wanted to take whoever they view as interior offensive lineman one. And that's probably going to be Osiris Torrance, if I had to guess, or maybe they'd rather prefer a center. Um, but that's certainly, certainly possible as well. I do think defensive line would be near the top of my list for them, but I don't know if, if I can see them taking Brian Brian Brzee. Um, but it's it's certainly possible. But I also like the idea of potentially just adding a, a Mazzy Smith, a Benton, or even a Ika and a Dexter later. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curveball here, do something a little different than I think most Seahawks fans are used to. And if it doesn't play out like this, don't kill me. It's just it's a mock. I do think they needed it. I'm gonna give them their interior offensive lineman one. Oh, Sirens Torrance. It's you know they did so good at drafting their bookend tackles last year. You gotta continue to fill out that offensive line. They just do. It, I, mean, I could take Steve Amila right here, and it'd be all said and done. But now I just it's just good the way they drafted last year. Then he continued to beef up that offensive line. And adding one or two more pieces, especially a young piece, that offensive line is set for a long, long time. So that's a very appealing factor into drafting Osiris Osir Torrance as well. Here at 37, and I, I'm, Keanu Benton is super fun. We pick again at 52, but if they picked Benton or Thule here at 37, I wouldn't be surprised. I think the fits are very good. Um some of these wide receivers are kind of fun too. And you know what? I'm going to take Josh Downs here at 37. I think the fit is is very, very good. Alongside Metcalf and Lockett while he's still there. Um, you get some juice. You get some big playmaking ability. A guy that can do a little bit of everything. I think he really complements everybody there because DK is just so good at you know just winning those 50-50 balls. Is being a physical guy, Tyler Lockett is so smooth and can get you down the field, but he also has some, you know, in between underneath game. Josh Downs is a guy that is can kind of do a little bit of it all as well, but he's a big play waiting to happen. And once those two other receivers draw the attention, you can get killed with Josh Downs up the middle or on a screen 
whatever it is, but I really do like the fit and the complimentary piece there of Josh Allen to that room. And that's what happens when you can have all these picks. And that's what happens when you have the success you did last year. And now I'm going to add these defensive linemen that I really do. Like, and for me, it's a little tough because I, I like Thule more than Siaki Ika, but I think they could probably really use more of a true nose, especially having Will Anderson. Now, I'm going to take Ika here at 52 just just because I, I do think they need that true nose. I think they need to stop the run a little bit better. And I think, you know, just having a guy that can clog up the middle will even help you get the most out of your first your first pick in Will Anderson. Um, it's just you, you need some bodies up there. We're not going to be done doing it just because we addressed them once. We're going to continue to double dip into that room. I can tell you that now. Um, but I, I think not only are these two picks good on the standalone, but I think they also complement each other extremely, extremely well. Well, but now here in the third, like 83. This is, this is interesting because they have all these picks at the top. I'm, I'm really, Joe Titman is kind of staring me, staring me in the face right here. I'm not, not going to lie to you. Some of these cornerbacks are as well. I think Stevenson will be gone. Garrett Williams does make some sense as well. I'm going to draft Garrett Williams. The, the reason I like Garrett Williams is I think a lot of people don't realize, like, once the year, like, once last year ended and the college football cycle was coming around, Garrett Williams was in the discussion for the best cornerback in the nation. And you know what? You know, it sucks, but he got hurt. He tore his ACL very early on in the season, and he didn't get that chance to kind of – solidify himself in that category so there's a chance that he you know could easily be the best cornerback in this draft class because that's what a lot of people once looked at him as so if you're going to add another good corner to the Seahawks secondary with the upside of Garrett Garrett Williams that is very scary very 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 scary now here we are in the fourth round that was got a lot of early picks, man. They just got a lot of picks in general. They're they're in, they're in such a good spot. Wouldn't surprise me if they wanted to trade up a little bit as well. Um, but uh, some of these these linebackers right here are exactly where my mind went. Um, their linebacker room hasn't been bad. It's been it's been pretty inconsistent. I believe they lost Cody Barton. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think they did. Obviously, they have Jordan Brooks. Um, but they still need some guys there. They need to stop the run. No soul. Henry Totoa are very fun. I'm going to lean the Alabama one. Henry Totoa, just, it's very, it's just a little less size concerns and everything along those lines. It feels a little bit safer. I think he kind of just fits more of that, um, you know, stop the run mentality that they kind of need to improve, which is what we're doing with Siaki, Gunn, Will Anderson. Um, just, you need, you need some bodies there. It's not necessarily, I mean, it's A+. plus. This draft has been Killer if you're a Seattle Seattle Seahawks fan. Um but let's let's continue it. Let's continue. I do I do like I do want to double dip again and and yep, this, this is the guy I was hoping was here, Mike Morris. The reason I wanted Mike Morris so much at this pick is because I did want to double dip. But the thing with Mike Morris is he can be your three tech defense alignment or he can kick out on the edge as well. So he kind of kills that two birds with one stone. You're double dipping in both. It allows you not to have to double dip truly in both by taking another defense alignment and another edge. Mike Morris is a guy who defends the run very, very well and his pass rush production has improved year in and year out at Michigan. A really big fan of his game. Um, one of my favorite mid-round defense alignments, the target, just a very good player. Very, 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 very solid. Very good. Ascending. If he continues to ascend, you're going to have a steal with Mike Morris, whoever ends up drafting him come come draft time. And I'm I'm pretty interested in going back on the defense or on the offensive side of the football. Um, here for Seattle, with all things considered, Andrew Voorhees is my no-brainer pick. Like I said, they need to continue to improve their offensive line. They have done so good at rebuilding this offensive line quickly the draft last year was phenomenal but Andrew Voorhees isn't going to play this year with his torn ACL but he's going to be good in the NFL you don't bench press he led he had the most reps at the combine with a torn ACL that he had happened the same day he literally tore his ACL and then went past that you know put his leg in the wraps and everything and then just go benched with his leg up and still had the most reps very violent physical interior offensive lineman yes you're going to have to wait for him but he is Phenomenal. Once he's going to be well worth the wait for the Seahawks. Once you pair him with their book and tackles they drafted last year, Osiris Torrance and Voorhees, that's 
That's beautiful. <laughs> their quarterback, whoever they would end up being their their long term quarterback at that point, should be a very clean day in and day out. So now here, you're not. I mean, again, maybe they look as a, their backup or their developmental guy, um, but there is nothing like this. Draft has been borderline perfect for Seattle. Um, so you, you're looking at just backups, special teamers, you know, rotational guys that can fill that can fill a um fill a role, whether that's like I said, whether that is special team. Just you gotta find something you like. I do like the idea of potentially taking a tight end here. I know they have no fan at this Lee, but just just in general like all those guys aren't great. They're all, you know, coming up on their contracts. Will Mallory is kind of and he's older, but he can be that real receiving threat. You got Braden Willis, who I'm a big fan of. I'm gonna take Payne Durham here for them. It's just he's he's that complimentary tight end that always is gonna fill out a room well. You know, he's not gonna be the best receiver. He's gonna be a really solid blocker, but he's got some receiving juice to him. He's got some stuff to like. You can move him around and block him. He I think he's got that like fullback potential to his game too if you'd want to use him in that versatile role as well um but just you know they need a little bit of a future guide there and i just think it's a good pick to fill out the, the roster here some special teams value there as well and if we're gonna fill out the roster too i uh, evan hall is pretty pretty tempting um i'm gonna look at the safeties just because they need one i'm gonna give him ronnie hickman from ohio state a plus pick again. We killed this draft based on this, this simulator. Just fill out a need, get some depth, get some bodies. Again, safety's not the biggest need, but I do think backup safety and all that stuff, special teamers in that specifically in the secondary, could be a need. I, you know, my Lions when I did was one of my favorites, but I think this one just blew it away. I think this is my favorite mock we've done. Just unbelievable. Will Anderson, Torrance Downs, Ika, Garrett Williams, Toto, Mike Morris, Voorhees, Durham, Hickman, just. So many things to like this draft. You know, you get your studs. You know, I know an often interior offensive lineman isn't the most fun thing, but it affects winning so much. Same thing with the run stopping nose. Then you have the juice with Will Anderson, Josh Downs, the upside of Garrett Williams. There's so much to like about the Seattle Seahawks team specific seven round mock draft. And if you do not want to miss any NFL draft related news, make sure you're following on all TWS and social media accounts. And do not miss your team specific seven round mock draft here on the TWS and YouTube channel. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys here again soon.